yeah okay good morning folks uh, one more lovely uh, episode on fanny for the soul and this time we are moving to the world of sport and we have with us a wonderful guest all the way from new zealand naz shah you know naz uh, or nazlin madraswala as she was known um, you know in the when when, when she was a school girl and a college student uh, was a, a very famous indian hockey player who played uh, who played for india in the moscow olympics at age 17 so if tendulkar played cricket for india at 16 then naz played hockey at the age of 17 so she was you know in that sense uh, a prodigy and uh, she played in the moscow olympics and then she at 19 she was one of the fastest uh, wingers in the world uh, you know the, the media called her um, dazlin nazlin and and that helped the indian team um in a large measure to win the gold medal no less at the 1982 asian games in new delhi and there's a photograph we'll share later on of uh, uh, you know she getting the gold medal and um, in later years in 1989 when she was a mother of a 3 year old uh, son she uh, still donned uh, hockey colors and captained the maharashtra state team her state and and they won the title in the national games you know which is very very competitive because they have lots of teams the top teams in uh, india are competing with each other uh, now she has migrated to uh, this lovely lovely country which everyone knows as new zealand and uh, a good 16 17 years back and she is um, the coach of the, the hockey coach of the hamilton boys high school which is one of the premier uh, top schools in new zealand which produces great hockey players who play for the you know the new zealand men's team uh so without much ado let's jump into the questions you know uh, hi hi naz how are you good good rahul lovely to see you and thank you for having me on your show I'm really excited the same yeah same yeah you know i you know, i must tell the viewers that like we know each other for almost 40 years so that's like yeah i know my goodness <laughs> <laughs> you know a long long time you know i i remember interviewing you when i was i think uh, 17 18 and oh my gosh uh, yeah i know my first interview one of my first interviews for this lovely maharashtra herald newspaper of pune yeah um, and, and we called you dazzle dazzlin nazlin that was what the headline was you know for the story uh, anyway uh, my first question uh, naz is that you know you were lucky to be coached by the late minu golakiri sir you know uh, who who was a real dronacharya you know in every sense of the word he he's produced uh, you know something like 300 national players and 35 40 international players like you uh, and, and you know really went unsung so please tell us a little about minu sir you know and what he did to your hockey so actually there's a little bit of history to this uh, rahul in the sense that he was the coach of my aunt zarina madraswala who was the first uh, captain of the indian women's hockey team that's way back in 1952 so really minu sir i mean he is iconic in the true sense of the word he is, he was one person who devoted his entire life to hockey and i feel that it was because of him that we played for india he was so devoted even if there was one player he would still come to the training i remember him making me hit the ball 100 times from a particular angle when i was playing left wing so that i got the ball in the right in the proper corner in the right corner where he wanted me to hit and he stood for an hour and just watched me hit it time and time and time again that was his devotion i mean you know there were times when we never had money and you know when he got a salary he would pay for the bus fare so we could go by bus rather than cycle you know 10 kilometers to the venue now that kind of dedication for a man who had so little and what really i think is that he was never recognized for who he was i think he's pr- probably produced the most number of captains i mean geeta sareen rekha monfan bridula kulkarni um otelia mascarenas um me i mean we were i can just on the you know quickly name five captains of indian women and like that he captain i mean so many people so many players indian national players and yet he has not been recognized so i'm if there is a government official listening to this even if he was recognized posthumously with 
the Dhyanchan Award for you know his contribution to women's hockey, I think it would do justice to him because I just feel that for what he has given to the sport, nothing has been done about him. There's not even a national tournament in his name. So somewhere, somebody, I mean, has to do something about it. And I'm happy to start the movement, but you know, without government support, um, I don't think much can happen. So that's my take on Minu, sir. I think he was one of the greatest coaches ever. I think that's such a it lovely, uh, uh, you know, those anecdotes that you shared about him uh, paying for your bus fares and all is so touching. And and I can understand him standing there and, and you know, watching you uh, perfect a shot for one whole hour, you know. And, and Absolutely. That's quite, that's quite incredible. Um, uh, I think you really must, um, uh, you know, I, I can always collaborate with you, but we must do something about a movement to get uh, recognition for Minu sir, you know. Absolutely, Thanks. absolutely. Very nice. Mm, uh, I'll move on to, um, you know, the Moscow Olympics. Because uh, 1980 was the Moscow Olympics and you got into the Indian team, which was, uh, you know, a very strong Indian side. And uh, you were just 17. So uh, what was that whole experience? You know, can you tell us what you recall from the games you played in Moscow or being, uh, you know, being with some stalwarts of the Indian hockey team at that time? Uh, I think it started with taking a long time to actually sink in that I was going to the Olympic Games. You know, I was in year 12 and it was like, is this really happening to me? Am I actually going to the Olympic Games? And then, you know, I thought, wow, what an opportunity. It is an opportunity of a lifetime and I'm not going to let any moment pass that I'm going to cherish every moment of wearing that Indian blazer with huge amount of pride. And I was playing with, you know, the top players in India. I was like the little one in the team. But I still remember getting to Delhi and getting on that chartered flight and seeing all the top dignitaries, all the athletes from all the other sport, getting onto that flight because, you know, there were chartered flights that took us to Moscow. So all of that, you know, they are like it happened yesterday, though it's happened 40 years ago. You know, this year is 40 years. But it feels like it was yesterday. And then getting there. And what I clearly remember was, you know, the guards. There were so many policemen and there were military all over the place, getting into the village, getting into, you know, the apartment block. And I remember one of the girls had their birthday, so they brought a cake on the day. And playing in the Olympics, I remember thinking, wow, look at this artificial surface, because that was an artificial surface. And it was quite an experience for us because we had not really trained on artificial surface. And then to actually play was an experience by itself. And actually, one thing that I will never forget, and I tell all my athletes who I coach today, on the last day of the games, as we were driving back to the airport, there was a big hoarding on the road and it said the games are over Los Angeles is only four years away and that has stuck with me and I that's what I tell my athletes all the time that you know what you are the winner for the day as long as that medal's around your neck once you take it off remember there are millions of people who want to replace you so we cannot be complacent we cannot think, yes, enjoy the moment, enjoy the glory, enjoy whatever comes with it. But remember that we can't be complacent. I think that, and one more thing I really remember, and I still sing those songs today, is all the patriotic songs we used to sing in the bus as we went, you know, from our village to the venue. And uh, it was amazing, you know, with such spirit, you could feel, you know, the goosebumps as you sang those songs, you know, you just wanted to give everything you had to keep the Indian flag flying high. And even today, I feel that kind of passion when I think of the games and, you know, those Rangde Basanti Chola. I still remember singing that song with such, you know, with that strength in my voice. And I just wanted to do the best I could for the nation. It was such an amazing experience, I think. Uh, I was blessed and I'm really, really grateful that I got that opportunity to play for India at the Olympic Games. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yes. 
and and y'all narrowly missed a meal that you know? oh my gosh i didn't sleep i think for a whole year after that my i could just see those games and i just couldn't figure out why i just feel that we could easily have won a medal and possibly even the gold we were a strong team but you know like in every sport you can never say what happens on the day and what you do on the day makes all the difference so for whatever reasons we didn't win but uh, honestly for a whole year i didn't sleep because i kept you know those memories kept coming back and i thought what an opportunity lost i was a kid then and obviously you know um i didn't have that much experience so i think our seniors would have felt it even more but uh, definitely that was one of the sad things so you know from my point of view i just hope that tokyo if it does happen next year um you know that our women's team will come back with a medal um you know that will kind of be a full circle to the 40 years that <clears throat> we still haven't been able to win a medal at the olympic games in hockey lovely but then um, you know god was kind and uh, you know uh, for all of you hockey players because we had a asian games in our you know on home soil in delhi mm-hmm. and, and the team was uh, i think stronger because it had more youngsters getting into the side or whatever and and uh, you all went on to win the gold medal in front of your True. own you know in front of all of us you know and i remember because uh, all of us were so avidly watching the asian games if we were not in delhi for that matter so uh, what's that experience like you know how was that experience the delhi experience uh, um gosh i can see that also i still remember the prime minister sitting at along the line because i think in those days the security was not that high i can still remember you know the prime because i was playing left wing you could almost you know they were just maybe about 10 yards away from where we were playing and it was just the number of people in the stadium just that huge cheer as we started every time we touched the ball every time we went into the opposition circle and honestly we were a very very strong team i think we were a very strong team by miles compared to the other co- uh, competition and it was amazing just to have the you know the honor and the privilege of playing in front of your home crowd um and you know it was quite interesting after the games um i got a postcard from somebody in um trivandrum and all it said was nazleen madraswala indian hockey team delhi and i still remember getting that in the village and i thought gosh this is all over the country people are celebrating and the gentleman wrote to me he said i couldn't see it but i was listening to the commentary so i'm writing this postcard um to just say you know i'm so happy with the w- way you played and whatever whatever but um, it was such an amazing experience it was such an honor and yeah and i don't think we've yet been able to repeat that performance again we've come so close so many times to winning a gold at the asian games as well we won a commonwealth game but not the asian games so hoping that the next asian games you know we will be able to go get a gold medal back but honestly rahul uh what precious memories amazing memories and at this photograph i want you to uh, you know tell us something about this because it has the late rajiv gandhi uh, you know uh, actually giving you the gold medal and it yeah. must have been quite a uh, you know for for a very young you were still a teenager then <laughs> yeah uh, yeah oh it was amazing you know um the i could i can still picture them actually sitting on the sideline and watching they were so close and then to be able to stand in front of like 30 40000 people while the prime minister of the country gives you a, your gold medal i mean as a sportsman what else can you ask for you know this is the pinnacle of you know what you can dream for when you start when i started playing i must tell you this little story when i started playing hockey i had the likes of geeta sareen and reka munfan and all of them who were my seniors and they'd all played for india and i used to see them wear their jacket with india on the back and as i walked behind them i dream that one day i will wear this jacket and so i think i was really fortunate that i could play with the players of that caliber for maharashtra there was a time when you know 10 to 12 players of the indian team 
came from Maharashtra state. Wow. So that's the dominance we had at that time. So I had the honor of playing with these top class players. So obviously my game improved much faster and they were my inspiration, you know, to wear that in those India colors. So when I was 16, I went to the world championship. So I think um, same age as Sachin Tendulkar. Yeah. Wow. 16, wow. we went to the world championship in uh, Canada, um, wow. Vancouver. So that was my first international. And I, you know, I got an opportunity to play with all these top players, but they were my inspiration. Just watching that India written on their back was one day I'm going to wear the uniform, you know, that's, that was my dream. And that was yeah, my single minded devotion to getting there. Fascinating. Fascinating. Really. Um, we move to your now what is called your karma bhumi, you know, in New Zealand, <laughs> which is, which is where you are you know, uh, living. And um, you are now the, uh, you know, not only a social sciences teacher, but you are also the hockey coach of this very, very fine school, which I was very privileged to visit, uh, you know, thanks to you um, early this year. So I like to show a video now. Just let's, uh, you know, pause for a short while. Susan Hassel and I'm very proud to be the headmaster of Hamilton Boys High School in New Zealand and it's a pleasure to talk a little bit about Nas Shah. I was headmaster 10 years ago when Nas came to the school and offered her services as a hockey coach and a teacher and we were very quick to take up the opportunity to appoint her and during the 10 years that she's been here uh, her reputation as an international hockey player has meant and her ability as an international hockey player has meant that she's made a huge difference to hockey at Hamilton Boys High School. She's been involved with the junior program, the elite junior program in hockey, and she has made a very real difference to the success of hockey in the school. She's also ensured that we've won the Founders Cup, which is the top second 11 cup in New Zealand. Wow. So it's a, a very, very well made uh, YouTube video, you know, by your school. And um, I think it's going to inspire a lot of, you know, young hockey players who are going to be watching this interview. Um, so uh, what is this? Uh, you know, uh, uh, right now, I believe three uh, of your ex Hamilton students are in the uh, New Zealand men's hockey team, you know, and, and some of these uh, and most all these three have been uh, was to 10 year old students of yours. So uh, how does it feel to be their first coach, you know? So in at Hamilton boys, we have an Academy of sport where when the young men come in year nine, they are uh, put in this particular class and they get specialized coaching. So we have it across the board for all sport. So for football, rugby, cricket, hockey, you know, all the major codes, we have specialized coaching. So yes, I was lucky, you know, I got these really um, very, very talented young men. And over the years, you know, they've continued to represent New Zealand. So yes, I, was, I am, well, you know, just one of their coaches. However, they came to me when they were quite young. So I would think that um, definitely, you know, those were the formative years. and. Um, then they continued to play and uh, Nick Woods, he was at the Olympic Games. He was only 20. He represented New Zealand at the Olympic Games. And then there was John Tikini, There was uh, Tim Neal. All these young men and even some of the girls I've coached at the national level uh, have represented New Zealand as well. So um, it's very fulfilling, you know, to see a young man just, you know, um, 
10, 12, 14 years of age, you know, they've come excited, talented, but they need to be guided in the right direction. And for me, I think that was the big challenge and is the big challenge. And I think it gives me the greatest joy rather than coaching a senior team. I would rather work at grassroots because I feel that is where we can have the greatest impact. So it was very, very special for me to have two of my boys um, at the Commonwealth Games. Um, you know, Aiden and Nick were at the Commonwealth Games. So it was such a moment of pride for me to see them, you know, actually representing the country. You know, there was a smile on my face every time I saw them go out onto the turf because, you know, you, uh, you know the memories went back to, you know, those little fellows you know, tiny fellows, and then today they are, you know, men representing the nation. So I think it's a great moment of pride, and I continue to strive to hopefully in the future produce a few more of them. How oh, nice. In fact, uh, I think the sentiment, this sentiment of yours would be shared by somebody like Rahul Dravid also, you know, who is doing the same for Indian cricket because he's the, he's coaching the, uh, younger cricketers. He's, he's the, you know, um, director for grassroots cricket, you know. So, uh, and you, so, you know, I'm sure the same sentiment works with him also. Um, you know, moving a little away from hockey, um, there is, uh, you know, you have told me and shared photographs of this uh, wonderful refugee center that the Hamilton Boys High School has, you know, and um, you are in charge of that. Um, is it also because you are the social sciences teacher or, uh, or because, you know, you're a hockey coach and, you, you know, you've been with young people. But what is the uh, magic of this refugee center? You know, can you tell us what happens there? So basically, these are young men who have come to New Zealand, um, either through the Red Cross or in some form. And they have come to New Zealand and now are New Zealand residents. For me, I feel I came to New Zealand as a migrant as well. And um, though it's not a similar situation, but these young men have gone through really difficult times. There's no connection between being me being a social uh, science teacher, whatever. It's just that I'm passionate. I want to improve and give them an opportunity because I understand where they're coming from. Some of the stories that they've shared with us, it is unbelievable what hardship and pain and the time they've had in the camps before they've been, you know, taken out of those camps and given an opportunity for a new life. So they're so grateful and they want to succeed. You can see the passion. They can't speak English. Most of them, when they come to New Zealand, they can just about speak their language. So we have boys from Colombia, Syria, um, Pakistan, Afghanistan, um, you know, all over the world. And they all come to us. And uh, at our school, we, that's why we're running the center. We have now renamed it the Multicultural Manaki Center. So, the, uh, so what we're trying to do at the center is to give them an opportunity to grow, to, to be part of the New Zealand framework now, but not to lose their identity. So we're using sport. Most of them are absolutely passionate about football. So we give them an opportunity and we use sport as a medium so that they get interwoven into the uh, fabric of New Zealand. We want to educate them so they become successful members of the community. Um, there is a lot of support from the school, Rahul. Huge amount of support. I have a student academic mentors, young men from the school who give up their time after school and come and work with these young men. By that, we are creating peer support, but also a bonding where they feel comfortable to, you know, communicate and share with somebody who is not, you know, one of them. You know, they need, you know, they, I, what, what we're trying to do is to tell them they don't have to remain in their own community, that it is safe. And one young man shared the story with me and he said, um, in his broken English, he, he's from Afghanistan, and he said to me, Miss, this is the first time that I can walk from my home to the school knowing that I won't get blown up or somebody will shoot me, and my mother knows that I will come home. 
Now, if that is the terror that they have lived through, I think it is only right that we give them an opportunity. And I must say to their credit, they have been amazing in how they have responded. They want to learn, they want to succeed, and they want to give back to the country. One of the young men said to me, Miss, I want to join the army because they brought us to New Zealand. They gave us a second chance. So I want to go back and give back because they have given me so much. So these are the stories, Rahul, and I'm very passionate about this. You know, I just feel that that is a small thing that I can do uh, to give back to the community and to these young men who deserve another shot at life. Fantastic. Fantastic. Lovely to hear this. Yeah. Um, you know, Naz, I am now tempted to ask you that question about your volunteering, you know, because you, you written, um, you, in one interview, you said that it uh, cost you, I mean, you had to uh, get about 8,000 dollars from your own resources to go all the way to Rio as a volunteer. Uh, and you have been a volunteer at, I think, the Commonwealth Games at 2018 also in Australia. So what is it that uh, drives you to be a sports volunteer? You know, One is love of sport. You know, and I think the Olympic Games or any sporting event is by itself such a huge opportunity uh, to witness but more than that, I think, Rahul, for me, it is all about giving back to sport. I am who I am today is because of sport. You know, as a person, as an individual, uh, for who I am, if it wasn't for sport, maybe I, you know, wouldn't be doing this interview, you know, or I wouldn't be recognized or known or whatever it is. But what sport has given me is has made me a complete person. I have learned to give. I have understood leadership. I have learned to be led. There are so many things, discipline, being a good person, teamwork, all the sport has given me. So I think by volunteering, it truly means that I love the sport. Nobody is paying for me. I'm doing it because I'm passionate about sport. And the other thing I think for me is that, you know, I, being an athlete, I know how it is, how tense it is for the athletes who are performing. So if I can go and I can make the environment better for the athletes in a way that they can come to their dressing room, it must be tidy. If they need to go to the, you know, the pitch to do their warm up, they must be taken immediately. If they require anything, because I know as an athlete, I would like that to happen to me. So this is my way of saying, look, I've been there. I know how you feel. I think I can contribute something. And I feel that everybody in their life should, if they can and afford it and it's possible, um, be a volunteer because it is the true sense of giving. You know, it's, there's no selfishness in this because you're giving your time, you're giving your money, you're giving everything. You know, it was a decision. Can I buy a new car and can I, you know, upgrade my house or should I con you know, save that money and go to the Olympic Games? And you know what my decision would be every single time, you know, because I can always buy a car at another time, but the opportunity to go to the games, and I remember at uh, Rio time, people said, oh, don't go, it's the Zika virus and all, you know, lots of things and it's not safe and the games might not go through the way. But hey, you know what I thought? I'm not gonna miss out. There's no way I'm gonna miss out. I'm gonna take my chances. At the end of the day, I am a sportsman. I am an athlete. I take risks and I'm going to take this one. And I'm so glad I did. Fantastic. Fantastic. I just want to show that photo again, just two minutes. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're standing here with the, the, you know, the wonderful Prime Minister of New Zealand. And we have read and uh, heard a lot about her. Uh, what is your take on, you know, I mean, the kind of person she is? Yeah. Oh, she was amazing. So we had, uh, this was the, after the finals when New Zealand won the uh, gold medal. And I was uh, with the New Zealand team as their liaison officer. So I was in the dugout with the team. And um, she actually, you know, there's no, um, no show, nothing at all. She came into the dugout 
and she you know hugged the girls and congratulated the coaches and everything and i was standing there and i just said to her you know madam prime minister can i have a photo with you and she said of course of course come along come along and then you know she put her arm around me and we took this photo and it was so lovely so casual so spontaneous and i think you know that's the joy of living in new zealand that it is so easy and you know there is no ceremony about i'm the prime minister of new zealand and you're just a volunteer here so you know how can i take a photo with you but it was just so easy and it yeah oh i don't know it's quite quite special and i think this will be one of my very very special photos that i will always cherish she is a wonderful person very easy to talk to and um, you know just such a simple person very very simple and very very kind yeah that yeah. clip you had sent me about uh, how she went and uh, you know picked up that uh, american journalist from the <laughs> auckland yeah, yeah. airport <laughs> airport yes you know no, and, and which country for, does that happen yeah you know and and you know she picked up the journalist who had come to interview her all the way from the us yeah. and then took him home for an interview it's fascinating you know anyway that's the beauty of your country yeah now uh, the final question uh, naz is uh, you know you have uh, though you have migrated to new zealand um, you are obviously uh, watching the indian uh, men's and women's hockey teams very very passionately and closely whenever they are in an international absolutely you know, and and uh, and you know more about them than so many others so what uh, what do you think india both men and women need to do to come back to that number one or you know top slots <sighs> you know it's a cutthroat at the top in in terms of competition so i think the main thing for us is to is consistency we can't afford to you know win one tournament and be complacent about it and then think oh now we are the top team and so you know it's okay this is my take on it i think complacency is something that we need to work out also you know just the mental build up because competitions are so hard and most teams on a physical level and on a tactical level will possibly be the same it is who has that mental strength you know at the moment where it matters to be able to hold on and to take it through the other thing i feel for india is we need to work more at the grassroots we really need to have a massive movement because i can tell you our indian athletes are amongst the most talented in the world but unless we can recruit them and give them you know the importance that is required to bring them to the level that they can then be you know polished to play at the top level but we've got to get the grassroots right unless there is a movement to make this happen and there are passionate coaches who are working at that level selflessly only then i think we can it's not that we can't because honestly we are so talented as a nation of hockey players i always say you know hockey is our sport however the europeans have got the edge over us i think simply because they are stronger possibly but hey you know what we can be smarter we can play smart sport we can play smart hockey but we've got to encourage this at grassroots we've got to do you know mental strength building that is what i think is an essential part of being a complete athlete today gone are the days where you were physically fit and you thought was fine so i just hope that uh, and the other thing is i would like to see more involvement of athletes in the management of the sport you know because athletes we understand what we've been through so we can you know we can give a clearer perspective of what is actually happening on the ground rather i'm not saying that administrators are not required however i feel the involvement of past players in the actual running of the administration will make a huge difference to how even the you know the athletes perceive the sport because you are in your own way a role model for the younger generation but when they physically see you involved in their well being i think it will make a big difference and to how many people will even play that sport i mean if they have the likes of you know the top hockey players and i think they need to have uh, to be seen as to be involved in the system 
you know, they need to be shown, showcased that, you know, look, X, Y, Z players are now involved in the management of the sport. And I think, you know, those players have so much to offer because they played the sport. They know exactly what it's all about. So if we can get that going, work on grassroots and the top teams not being complacent and working on their mental strength, I don't think the gold medal is very far away. Fantastic, fantastic. You know, people will be very happy to. Very interesting feedback. Um, so thank you, Naz. You know, um, uh, sad that the interview is coming to a close. But, <laughs> you know, yeah. But, uh, you know, we can go on and on really. But, uh, you know, this is uh, uh, attention span what it is nowadays. <laughs> but, <laughs> Fair enough. But, but, but lovely, lovely speaking to you. And, and uh, let, let's keep in touch. And, and more power to you in uh, Hamilton and in uh, New Zealand. And hope to see you soon back in India. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rahul. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Bye.